Welcome everyone to a very special presentation today. Uh, we have Kristen Spaulding here. She is the executive director of the Collin County History Museum located in the historic McKinney downtown. So Kristen is a lifelong traveling genealogist. Before online research subscriptions like Ancestry.com, you would have to go on locations and see the original records. Census records were on microfilm at the National Archive locations in major cities. The LDS Church has a large repository of handwritten family records, the largest of which is in Salt Lake City. So Kristen is a cemetery volunteer and a contributor to findagrave.com and lives in the McKinney Historic District where she is restoring an 1899 farmhouse with her husband. They have six children between them, four of which are hers. The youngest, her son, is a sophomore at the University of Florida. Kristen graduated from Florida State University and has been a museum volunteer for several years. And in 2020, she was appointed as the director of the Collin County History Museum. So we would love to welcome Kristen and thank the Collin County History Museum so much for doing this event with us today. Kristen, you are good to begin. Yay, can you help me share my screen? I sure can. Let me put the spotlight on you. Uh, you should be able to, you should be able to share. Oh, here we go. Yes, it just popped up. There you go. All right, I am learning all the time here. Technology. Right. If that works, yay, that worked, except it's on the wrong page. There we go, all right. Okay, hold on, I am gonna get better at this, I promise. Okay, and there we go. <laughs> well, welcome to the Collin County History Museum. Unfortunately, we are still closed to do our part in slowing the spread of coronavirus. But while we have been closed, uh, we have been working hard behind the scenes, um, working in the archives, preserving artifacts, researching and building new exhibits for the future. We have actually been very productive. We have a special treat for you today, which is my very first time of doing a virtual tour of our current exhibit, which is McKinney Then and Now. The exhibit gives a unique perspective, contrasting the way McKinney used to be with the way it is now. And we have some really terrific interactive technology that we use. And I promise not to spoil too much of the exhibit because we hope that you will come here to see it for yourself when the pandemic is over. I will make sure to give you just a little taste and also give you some, some additional information that's not in the exhibit. So this is, this is exclusive. So admission to our museum is free. Our main gallery exhibit changes every two to three years. So we always have something new and, and always have a good reason for you to come visit again. There is a lot to see. So we hope you will visit often. Our mission is to share local history with the community. And we appreciate the support of our donors and our members and the gifts and the grants that we have received. We are very appreciative that you are here and for your support. In honor of Celebration Magazine, our tour today will be a highlighting a few seniors that have made an impact on McKinney. Let's take a peek inside the museum and you can see in front of you, we've stepped inside now. And to begin, our museum is located in a beautiful Beaux-Arts 1911 federal building. The architecture alone makes it a wonderful place to visit. Long ago, the post office and Federal Savings Bank were right here in the heart of downtown McKinney. Little by little, banking became privatized and then postal operations outgrew this facility in 1959. After that, the building was used for, as a driver's license office, um, civil service, civil servant exams were given upstairs. 
Um, and we also had storage here. Um, it's a pretty nice looking storage unit here. Um, the postal operations left this building in 1959. About that time, the building was deemed impractical and it was recommended for demolition. Uh, the senior ladies of McKinney had another idea though, and they banded together and worked to repurpose this building as a museum. Former First Lady, Lady Bird Johnson, was here to cut the ribbon in 1976, and then they, they began their restoration of the building and building of the museum collection and the very first exhibits here. Um, my note here is never underestimate a group of senior women with a plan. This is our Colin, Kinney, our Colin McKinney video room. And we have footage that we show in here of the 1948 McKinney tornado aftermath and other short films of interest. But let's talk about Colin McKinney. Colin McKinney is both the namesake for Collin County and the city of McKinney. He was born in New Jersey in 1766. Remember earlier we were talking and we talked about birthday twins. Well, he's my birthday twin. I was also born 66 in New Jersey. A little bit of difference in time, time frame. When he was about 10 years old, we, we are now in 1776 and we all know what happened. Um, his daddy went off to fight in the Revolutionary War. And he stayed back with his family and he became, he, he developed quite a number of skills at that time, um, learning to negotiate and, and make peace with the Native Americans was one of them and very useful later in his life. Um, he also, um, it, later in his life, he managed a large estate, he, and he moved his way south through the United States. Um, he also managed a trading post, and he developed very good management skills. All these things would come, come into use later in his life. Basically, he lived an entire lifetime before he even arrived in Texas. At 65 years old, in the year 1831, he moved his family to right along the Red River in Texas. A few years later, at 69 years old, he became a delegate to the convention meeting at Washington on the Brazos. And in 1836, he became the oldest signer of the Texas Declaration of Independence that he helped to write. But he wasn't finished yet. At 78 years old, he rode his horse to adjoining states and helped guide settlers to develop new land in Texas. He lived to be 95 years old and was widely respected for his, his ideals and the life he led. By the way, there are no photographs of Colin McKinney and we have a lot of artistic impressions and Photoshop and the like, as you can see here. Um, every new picture of Colin McKinney, he gets younger and better looking, which could not possibly be a bad thing. Um, to his credit though, he was known as being barrel chested and, and very good looking man. Next, we're gonna visit Veterans Hall. This is our veterans exhibit where we, we celebrate our veterans, highlighting a few at a time on a rotating basis. Right now, we have the history of our local veteran support groups, the VFW and the American Legion, and also our veterans memorials. McKinney has been home to a few three-star generals. This is General Warden. And also we have General Baker on display. We proudly claim to be the home of a Buffalo soldier here in Collin County, and his name was Walter Faulkner. We also celebrate one of the very first women to serve in the military, affectionately known as a WAC, the Women's Army Corps in World War II. Um, we have James Webb. James Webb was um, held captive for three and a half years and forced to participate in the infamous Baton Death March of World War II. After the war, he served as our county clerk here uh, for many, many years. In more recent history, this is Cody Board. Cody Board was killed in action in Afghanistan in 2010 in Operation Enduring Freedom. He was only 19 years old. He was a week shy of his 20th birthday. We're very, very proud of our veteran service in Collin County. 
So this is our studio photographer and early home photography exhibit. The man on the left here, his name is Augustus Meredith Wilson, known to many locals as Uncle Gus. Hands down, one of the most interesting characters Collin County has produced. He was born in 1845 and lived to be 91 years old. Like many of his contemporaries, he was a farmer and frugal, but uniquely, he was very good at math and a shrewd investor who became one of the wealthiest men in Texas, though you would never know it by the way he lived. And this was in his lifetime, he was one of the richest men in Texas. He never married or had children, though he had a beautiful border collie named Joe, who everybody knew. He was also a teetotaler and did not approve of drinking. During the last 20 years of his life, he gave away almost a million dollars. He held a lot of mortgages on farms and sometimes he would visit these farms and stay for dinner. And while the lady of the house was cleaning up, she would find the deed under a plate um, and it'd be marked paid in full. Gus loved cars and he gave away at least 25 brand new automobiles, the newest, latest technology to deserving families. He also liked hard work. Uh, there's a story that he saw three young boys as he was driving by and they were hoeing cotton and two of the boys stopped and, and stared after him, um, admiring his car, admiring him, whatever. He, um, he came back the next day. The third boy, by the way, stayed and he just, he didn't pay any attention, just kept working. He came back the next day. Whoops, I made a mistake. Sorry about that. Um, so Uncle Gus came back the next day and he rewarded the boy who didn't pay one bit of attention to, to him and kept working because he thought that was the most important thing. Anyway, he gave that young man a thousand dollars worth of stock in the power company. Um, he gave money to an African-American orphanage in Dallas. He paid for the house and salary of a teacher and for the funeral of a neighbor's child. He was a good guy. So this is the next part of our exhibit. And this is our city of McKinney exhibit. And you will see the changes in government buildings and elected officials. And then here are some uh, examples of our interactive technology that we have at the museum. This is called augmented reality. And there are many old pictures in our displays that you can scan. And then as you scan them, the current McKinney picture will pop up. So here's an example. This building was a hospital, but is now a school, so, so watch this. And ta-da! So we have lots of pictures and, and we set you a list of an iPad in the museum. It's a great place to bring a child to assist you and, and, and give them the, the power of running around finding all of these awesome pictures within pictures here in the museum. It's, it's a really good family place to be, um, something for everyone, but particularly the technology I think is the highlight. And thank you to Mary Carol Strother for this. This is all her. Um, she did a fantastic job with this. So. Um, Anyway, I hope you get to see this for yourself at some point. So let's talk about another terrific McKinney senior. This is Leonard Evans. So I never met Leonard Evans, though I surely wish I had. Uh, I've heard lots of stories and lots of people that I, I have the most respect for who thought that he was just an absolutely amazing human being. Um, he died at 93 in 2018. He served in World War II, and he received his college education thanks to the GI Bill. He became a math teacher and a coach, and was the very first African American to teach in desegregated McKinney, in a desegregated McKinney classroom. Later, he served on the school board, and in his retirement, he had a driving school. In his later years, he would go to the different schools, and he would share his family stories 
to auditoriums full of students who were riveted by him. I, I really wish I had a transcript of his exact words, but you'll have to make do with my paraphrasing. Um, basically, he would recount many, many stories in his life, but one of the stories um, that, that I don't think anybody else could tell the same way was, were the stories that his grandfather told him. And his, his grandfather was, was born into slavery, and at about 12 years old, um, was there when his parents were sold away. Coach Evans, he told these stories, by the way, of segregation and integration with love. He would ask that no one pity him, but instead be very, very proud of what he had accomplished and what his family came from and where you could go. He, he, amazing guy. So this is our livery, and the livery supported the earliest of work and transportation in McKinney. Did you know that McKinney was the mule capital of Texas for a while? And then technology came and uh, we move on to trains and streetcars. And again, these are different aspects of our exhibit that you're seeing. Certainly the coming of the railroad um, allowed McKinney um, to grow, particularly cotton, which brought wealth to the area. As McKinney grew, so did our churches. And we had lots, we had pretty much every denomination and, and we've tried to give you a little sampling in our, in our exhibit. So this, this is R.C. Horn. R.C. was born in 1844 and he came to Collin County as one of the earliest pioneers here. He, he moved into this area in a covered wagon at about age 14. He became a minister and served in that capacity for 49 years. He was also a prohibitionist. Every year on his birthday, uh, the annual family cemetery cleanup and picnic were held. He kept a diary most of his life, which was then published into a book. And then residents here will remember that excerpts were published in the newspaper um, every so often under the, under the heading of records of a busy life. That was his column. And in his later years, because of his long white beard, he became Santa Claus to the local children. He died at age 92. So this is our entertainment exhibit. And this is a good place to plug our latest um, pandemic project, which is an outdoor exhibit. And out on the outdoor exhibit, you can visit that at any time, um, anytime during daylight, you can go by and see. We have some videos out there. We have some information out there, but it's all about early amusements in, in McKinney. So McKinney had um, many theaters and movie houses and was a destination uh, for entertainment. Uh, people would ride the railroad in, um, ride the inner urban in, and um, come to see a show or have their picture made or something like that. And by the way, uh, I don't know if Dan can, uh, is Dan still on? If he is and you want to pop up his background picture, Dan, as his background, has chosen the very first day that the inner urban came to McKinney in uh, 1908. So anyway, that's just a little fun fact. We will uh, have him show it. Hopefully That's okay. Pop back That's on okay. You don't have to. I just thought that would be fun. That that is that is the picture though, 1908. So uh, and then they lined everybody up and they they took their picture. All right. So as I said before, the the train brought co brought brought transportation here and it allowed cotton to um, be sold and and that increased our economy here and it, it brought wealth here and our industry grew uh, We not only grew the cotton, but we had a mechanized gin we could um, we had mills that would um, Weave the, the fabric would make things out of the fabric um, Cotton seeds actually have a valuable edible oil within them so Having that particular gin here. We were able to sell that again all these industries made possible by cotton and the railroad who could, would help us ship it out of here to to sell in other places. 
Um, we also, we were, McKinney was, oh, you know what, I am not showing videos. I'm so sorry, I, I'm in the story here. So this is our cotton exhibit. And we had that, this is the cotton mill I wanna show you. So look at all of these faces of hardworking people that worked in the cotton mill. Wow. McKinney at one time was the largest producer of colored denim in the world. We also were a hub to, starting then, we were a hub to the apparel industry, which uh, we could probably, you know, we can still claim some of that today. We have wonderful <clears throat> business in McKinney. If you like shopping, McKinney's got it all. Uh, hat shops and shoemakers, and uh, we have all kinds of things here. Great little boutiques. We had other mills as well. We had the flour mill. Um, basically, the, the train allowed industry to flourish here in McKinney. So this is our downtown square and pharmacy exhibit. So I wanna show you the Northside Drugstore. So the Northside Drugstore has continued to serve customers since 1907. George Webb purchased the pharmacy in 1953. And literally this, the pharmacy was on the north side of the square, thus the name. The store was relocated in 1985 to West University Drive 380, where it's still family owned and operated today. Wow. Mr. Webb and the JCs, they started the very first recreation center in McKinney in 1968. Last year, the city of McKinney dedicated a park in his honor to Mr. Webb's honor George Webb is currently 92 years young and doing very well. He's the only one living of the seniors that I'm gonna talk about today. And there he is. This was just last year. Mm. So this is our banking and business portion of our exhibit. We're gonna, let's take you around here and show before I go any further. So it's a Central National built in 1917. And there's, some, there's a great story about that building. You're gonna have to come for another tour for that one though. And this building still stands, but you would never recognize it. They totally redid it in the deco era. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here's another, here's another little peek. So remember I said this was the savings bank. Well, this is one of the two antique safes that we have here in the museum and we basically let you go and explore them but I did it for you so you could see how that works and that opens up further but again you got to come visit all right so this this is possibly the oldest photograph of McKinney circa 1868 and if you look in the very center, you will see the JS and SD Herd store, which was started by the Herd Brothers in 1866. Mm. And then here is our Herd exhibit. Now the story that I want to tell you actually is about one of the Herd Brothers' daughter. So JS Herd had a daughter and her name was Bess. And she was born in 1884. Now, Bess, Bess was her own woman. She refused to ride side saddle, so she became the first woman in McKinney to straddle a horse. She was also the first female in McKinney to ride a bicycle. She was educated. She went to the McKinney Collegiate Institute and then Baldwin College. At Baldwin College, she was a member of the 1902-1903 basketball team. Mm. And then she went to the Parsons School of Design, which is very well known. She definitely lived an untraditional life, and she never married, and she spent her life creating opportunities to educate children, and that was her lifelong mission. In her later years, she felt that far too much landscape was being developed, and so in her 80s, she conceptualized and she built the Herd Natural Science Museum, and Wildlife Sanctuary, and that was in 1967. And today, the museum is still going strong, and it's right here in McKinney, and it serves more than 100,000 visitors annually. Miss Bess lived to be 102 years old. I say that's living right. 
So that'll conclude our tour for today. Like I said, we have many other tours that we are developing and we hope that you will be able to come and visit us um, and schedule a tour at your convenience soon, very soon. I hope that everyone stays healthy and thank you very much for coming today. So I'll thank turn it back to you. Thank you, Kristen. That was great. Oh, I love, man, I just, the old architecture always gets me. I absolutely love that. So one of the things, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to see if we can get her or ask them to unmute. Um, I'm going to mispronounce the name. Amaret Kane said that RC uh, is their great grandfather. So I'm curious, do you have anything you want to tell us about that? <laughs> well, of course, he was gone before I was born, but mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of family history still, and um, I actually am the caretaker of the Horn Cemetery, and um, he is not buried there, though. He is buried in Pecan Grove because he uh, was a, a veteran of the Civil War, although there's a real great story about that too, um, about him in the Civil War. The story goes that he was shot and he thought he was going to die, but as it w happened, the bullet hit his belt buckle and it saved his life. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Oh my goodness, but he was a fine man, very fine man, very, very wonderful Christian. He, he did preach at Mantua Church that where Colin McKinney was one of the founders there. He was not the full-time preacher, but he, he preached there. And, and he's, he's got a church, he's got a stained glass window in the church that, with, his, with his likeness he on it. He has a stained glass window yeah. in the church in Van Austin, he sure does. Is That's amazing. Ms. Amaret, would you promise to come visit me at the museum sometime? I would really love to talk to you. <laughs> I would really love to talk to you. <laughs> I know a lot about the Horn Cemetery, and I, I, I would really love to talk uh, another time. But, oh, thank you so much for coming today. You oh, did a cool. nice job, Kristen. You're that welcome. was really great. Amaret, thank you for sharing that. And if, I, I posted it in the chat earlier, but just in case... If anyone has any information that they would like to share or a story about the history of the area, because I know we got a lot of people who this is, this is where they're from. So, but I do have a question for you, Kristen. And the no question <laughs> is, um, where is the building that was redone in the deco period? Which oh, building was that? Is, where is it? So, ooh, you know, my current, uh, now, the, the square is suffering right now. If you want to help out the square, go shopping. They are really having a hard time. Um, it used to be named Arabella's and then the Crystal Cloche. And oh, forgive me, business owner, if you're out there listening. I, I don't know the current name. It's got, they've got fabulous jewelry, but the name of the shop, shop eludes me right now. It is on the southeast corner, the south side of the square, but on the southeast corner. Um, you know what? I, I'll, I'll stop for a minute and I'll see if I can go grab a picture to share with you. I don't know how I, I, don't know how I can do that. Anyway, um, anyway, we have it on the McKinney Dry Goods. Years ago in the 60s, it was McKinney Dry Goods. Excellent. Oh, okay. the 60s too. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah, Art Deco is my Question. favorite. So yeah, go ahead. Uh, this seems to be more of a McKinney Museum. Is there anything outside of McKinney? And it says Collin County Museum. Yes, you know what? We are the Collin County History Museum. Our current exhibit, just, just right now, we happen to be doing a McKinney then and now. Oh, but okay. No, um, we just finished up an exhibit on World War I, um, uh, the, the, the 100th um remembrance of, of world war one and and we de we celebrated all of collin county just this exhibit we're we're doing the downtown square we're doing mckinney so you know we are definitely a repository for collin county history and we have um like say the veterans exhibit that is collin county that's it that's that's everywhere so yes we are collin county yeah, we most definitely, we wanted, our goal today was to give you a tease so that when it's safe, you can go visit yourself in person and see all the great things that they have. Um, 
And we'll have a and new exhibit um, coming up in a couple of years. I'm not sure what that will be. We've got some ideas, um, some plans even. But you know what? That doesn't mean the next one after that. It could be, and we're always getting ideas. You know, um, we, we like to showcase Collin County and we just kind of work through the subjects um, and share what the stories that we think we can do a good job with and what hasn't been seen in a while. So. Yeah, that's great. So I, I love Harriet Silverman's uh, comment. She said, it's amazing how many lived into their 90s and older. Like Colin McKinney lived to be 95 back then. That was unheard of. Like I said, in his 80s, he was on his horse going to the adjoining states and bringing settlers here. Uh, can you imagine? I, I Anyway, he, he was, and he didn't even get here till he was 65. Um, so he was, you know, he started here and he, and he came and uh, made an impact here for sure. Yeah, also, we've got a lot, a lot of people commenting that they've really enjoyed the presentation. And uh, Janet said, have you ever looked at whether there were nurse cadets in the area? And that might be a fun idea for an exhibit. You know what we have and in our World War I exhibit, we, we talked about that. Oh, and how can I not mention that we just passed last week, we just passed the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. Can you imagine women were not yeah. allowed to own property or to vote or to do just about anything? <clears throat> and the National Amendment, the 19th Amendment passed a hundred years ago last week. And we actually had a huge event planned, a couple of them for this year, which of course the pandemic has, has made us postpone to next year. But mark your calendars for March 20th, we are having a Women's History Day, Living History, our, our annual paint out this year is themed for the Year of the Woman, which, eh, two years of women, we can celebrate two years of women. Anyway, women's suffrage, the, the Rosie the Riveters, the women that came from here that went to work in the factories, um, the nurses in World War I. Um, and we have a lot of great women's history here in Collin County. Very cool, very, very cool. All right, well, once again, Kristen, thank you. Now I am going to give you an unashamed plug. So Collin County History Museum works only on donations. Um, and because of the fact that the museum is not open right now, that's making it hard to get donations. So um, just wanna put it out there. I am going to put in the chat a link on how you can directly donate to them if you would like. I'm also going to include um, a link to their website so you can check out more of what they have going on. And if you're interested in um, learning more about Colin McKinney, they do have a book that they sell also. Um, so if it's something you're interested in or maybe for um, someone younger in their family, maybe a young history up and coming buff, um, it would be a really, really great gift for them. So I just put the donation link in. Just want to let everyone know that, you know, they are a nonprofit. Um, and Thank I would you. be remiss, of course, if I did not mention that. And then also I am including, like I said, just the link to their museum. It's so beautiful. So, so, I mean, McKinney's old. Like it's, 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 I mean, it's old compared to a lot of areas. It used to be we a hustling. We for our age, don't we? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. I, I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. I, I never realized the history that was there and how great it was. So Kristen, thank you once again. Thank everyone at the Collin County History Museum for everything that they've done. Um, I did have someone ask if you guys are registered for North Texas Giving Day. Um, we try. We try every year. Um, they, North Texas Giving Day, um, we, we're not it's, the it's I used to work in nonprofits, so I understand the answer you're trying to give. Yeah, so I will give that answer for you. <laughs> yeah, we're a five hundred one c, so they don't let us get out there. Um, unfortunately, we, I wish I wish we could. I mean, we I feel like our mission is great, but for but for legal reasons, we're not the right kind. The right gym. type, yeah. So um, so the the organization that puts on North Texas Giving Day is looking for specific types of nonprofits that do um, community service type projects. So unfortunately, um, unfortunately, Collin County History Museum does not fall under the umbrella of the types of services that they are 
looking to support, which is is sad. Um, but um, but you know the link is in there. You can go to their museum and find more information, or call them if you're interested um, in donating to them. And then Bonnie actually just said that her ancestors settled in Collin County in 1843. Awesome. Tell, please come visit me, Miss Bonnie. Please. <laughs> that is I'm, so I cool. I love it. I could only claim 20 years here with my family. I've got 12. My mom's got a few before that, but uh, I got here as quick as I could. I just love hearing everything. Yes, and that's one thing I do want to uh, reinforce also. Kristen, she is loves oral history. If any of you have, like I said, those those stories, if there's anything you would like to share, suggestions, um, she is more, more than happy uh, to listen and speak with you. Um, but thank you once again. We're going to say goodbye to our Facebook people. Uh, so goodbye, Facebook. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, um, if you would like to join us live on Zoom for these events where you do have the ability to ask us questions, you could go to celebrationmagazine.com and that is where you will register. So thanks once again, Facebook land for joining us. You guys have a great day. Okay, the stream is over. All right, everybody, if you want to unmute yourselves, let's give Kristen a big round of applause. And if you wanna... Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Kristen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. I loved it. Thank for, you. So for much. all of you that have a McKinney history, let me say that our collection exists and it comes from the residents of Collin County. Everything we have was given to us. And, you know, photographs can be duplicated now. So anyway, if you have a history and you have artifacts and things, oh, would we love to have copies of your photographs, of your family? You know, you'll end up seeing them in our exhibits. We really appreciate um, McKinney history. Be great, it? Yeah. <laughs> And one other thing I wanted to add, too, if you weren't aware, Collin County History Museum puts a fantastic article in the magazine every issue. Um, so be sure, if you enjoyed the presentation, check out those articles. They are wonderful. So they uh, always have something exciting to say. So, all right. Well, did we have any other questions or any other comments from all of my friends out there? I have one. Ooh, I heard and I have one. I can't see who you are. So. It's Bonnie. It's Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie, go ahead, darling. I, I visited you the Saturday before the pandemic hit, and I joined the museum, but I live in Virginia. I can't come volunteer. Oh. <laughs> we appreciate you anyway. <laughs> Thank you. So, Bonnie, if you're in Virginia, then how did you hear about these events? Because I be belong to the museum, they sent us information. Wonderful. Well, welcome. And Bonnie, just because you're in Virginia and we're in Texas, please feel free to join us for any of these Zoom events. We've got people from California. It, it We've got like people all from the, the all over the place that join us. So please feel free to join us. Um, so can I, I do, ask a question, please? Sure, Cynthia, go ahead. Um, when I got my link today, this is the first time I've come, and for uh -huh. some reason my computer won't let me get on Zoom by using a link. So when you send out the information, could you also include the meeting number? You know what? I, I will make that suggestion to Rosa for the meeting ID. That's a great suggestion. I have to call her today and get that for yeah. her every day, every week. Okay. Yeah, I will definitely do that. We generally don't put passwords on our Zoom, so that shouldn't be a problem, but most definitely I will talk with her about including that me meeting Thank ID. Thank you very much. Of course. So she's, um, she's, so she's, asking yeah. for, she's asking for the meeting number. And yeah, actually, yeah. If, if you look at the link, in the link, it actually has Maybe. the meeting number already in the link. It's already described in there. That's okay. If we can include it and make it easier for someone, we'll do it that way, and we can split the two apart for them. We okay. don't mind. But you don't need a pass. You don't need a password. With, with no, just no password. Okay. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I do have a question, Kristen. They asked if you guys have any old family Bibles there. Ooh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I have a big box of family Bibles. Um, different exhibits. We bring them out. Oh, yes. And 
and on request, I, you know, if you're, if you're not busy and you have an appointment, if you're a member, I will make time for you to show you uh, what we have. Have you, have you ever thought about digitizing those for the family ancestry? We have rooms full of documents that are in line to be digitized. Yes, ma'am, we would love to digitize. It's a very expensive process of right. volumes. Mm -hmm. uh, the last copies of the McKinney Examiner that exist, and we have, the, they're bound, they're original newspapers and they're bound. It's my understanding that every year of those, it costs $1,000 to, uh, to digitize. So we have a, the, the genealogical group, the local genealogy group here, they raise the money and do that and they $1,000 per volume. So yeah, oh, I've got books. Oh, I've got so many cool books. I've got great ledgers, um, different resources. You know what else I have? I have um, family genealogies. People will bring it's, us. Well, it's in the Bibles. A lot of it's in the Bibles. Oh, a different thing. You know, it depends on the Bible. They, you know, just have to go through um, yeah. and see um, which, you know, which family that Bible belonged to and if there are records in there. But again, then we'll have a family file too. We cross-reference things to where you'll see the family histories. All, all the things that pertain to that family will be in a file. So um, oh, we're a resource. Mm How -hmm. oh, cool. I, I, have, I have a little bird here that told me that you have done an amazing job archiving documents there. Thank so. you. <laughs> I'm preservationist, me. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So if you can't tell, Kristen loves her history. Yeah, she loves, a little crazy. loves, to, hey, that's what you need and that's what you want, right? When my my kids will say, Mom, you're wearing the same clothes you had on two days ago and it's two in the morning. What are you doing? And I'm like, well, research, I can't help it. I, I'm on a hot lead. I can't let it go right now. So anyway, <laughs> I'm just a little nuts. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. How fun. How fun all right everyone um so kathy aiello said asked if you need help with volunteers to help yes, you digitize yes. things yes absolutely yes come and see us absolutely we have every kind of conceivable job if you like giving tours we can train you for that if you like organizing newspapers we can do that you know we archiving research uh we've got it all even simple stuff like um uh, working on special events and just being here to greet, greet people. You know, we have, we have all kinds of um, talents that we make use of here. And, and that's why we love our members too. And our board, our board is so active. Our, our board throws a great party. Come play with us as it is. So um, yeah, we, we love our volunteers. That's what we always say. Come play with us. <laughs> and it is. It's fun. I, I have cool artifacts to play with. So, <laughs> hey, right? Um, and, and cool technology things for. Yes. I was thinking, those are, that's amazing. That would actually, I think, get my son super like. If you interested. have technology skills, come see me. Oh, I got projects. And I love students. I have many interns, uh, several. Um, I have two that start tonight, actually, two new interns for the. For the fall. Um, one is a, a PhD candidate and the other is um, um, between her bachelor's and her master's. Anyway, I love students that come in. Sometimes it works with their programs. Sometimes they just want to be here. Um, I love students, high school students. Oh, I have a group of high school boys, honor students, and they were helping me do research for Ross Cemetery. And Ross Cemetery is um, adjacent to Pecan Grove Cemetery. Pecan Grove is the big historic cemetery that everybody, it was just mentioned a minute ago, um, where R.C. Horn is buried. But adjacent to the uh, well-known uh, Pecan Grove Cemetery is lesser known, Ross Cemetery. And Ross Cemetery is the historic African-American cemetery. Oh, so, neat. And we have been working towards getting um, grave markers for veterans that are buried there. Anyway, I, I love my students. I love our projects. That's how great, how great. We need more people like you, Kristen, and, and your students that are coming because we need to preserve what's going on and, and uh, you know, keep with our history and, and watch those buildings. That's, that's amazing. So thank you. Thank you so much for what you do. Once again, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. No, oh, you're welcome. All right, everyone. Well, you guys have a great day. And don't forget, you can reach out to Kristen at the Collin County History Museum um, if you have any questions, if you'd like to become a member. Um, and we will definitely keep you posted on when they are open again um, so you can go out and visit them yourself.